At the college level, he was a guy who was once compared to the likes of James Harden and Jimmy Butler. For his strong frame, combined with his ability to score in every possible way, by drawing fouls, by taking guys off the dribble, running the break and finishing over the defense, and even shooting threes, the dude was a 42% three-point shooter in college. Winslow had the complete package, a five-star recruit in 2014, with all the talent, athleticism, and physical tools to succeed. You add on his stellar NCAA tournament run at Duke, and the result? A man who's destined to become the next great NBA superstar. So, what on earth happened to him? Why hasn't his career panned out? How's it going folks? My name's Andy, and today, let's talk about Justice Winslow. Coming into the 2015 NBA Draft, the mock drafts predicted he'd fall anywhere between the 5th to 10th pick. And so, the Miami Heat took him with the 10th pick, 3 spots ahead of Devin Booker, another guy the Heat considered taking. There were quite a bunch of comparisons between Booker and Winslow at the time of the draft. While most people considered Booker as the better shooter and scorer, Winslow was considered a far superior athlete with a much higher upside. I'm sure the Heat regret this one. NBA draft expert Jonathan Givoni described Winslow like this. Justice Winslow is doing his best Jimmy Butler impression, defending, rebounding, making great post-entry passes, scoring in transition. Stud. At this time, the Heat just missed the playoffs. They had a mediocre season because LeBron left a year prior. They needed somebody to fill the void, to lead this team into the next era of Miami Heat basketball, as the old guard fades away into the sunset. Before Bam Adebayo, before Tyler Hero, before Jimmy Butler, Winslow was the guy who was supposed to be the next franchise player. Getting drafted onto the Heat was initially seen as the perfect situation for him. Winslow is now surrounded by veterans and mentors who can teach him. Plus, with an experienced coaching staff and a stable organization behind him, they know what they're doing. That's all good, right? Well, the issue was that the Miami Heat playstyle really did not suit his game very well. In a stat from Synergy Sports, in Winslow's lone season at Duke, he scored 1.16 points per possession in transition, the highest of any offensive category. That was his main strength, his bread and butter. He was a run-and-gun transition player who thrived off his own energy. The Heat in 2015, they were the complete opposite. They were an aging, slow-paced team. In his five seasons with the Miami Heat, they were always bottom 10 in pace in every season. Most of the time, bottom 5, actually. Eric Spolstra's teams are usually like this, to be honest. Even today, it's still the same way. He prefers a half-court game plan, which is great because his meticulous execution on offense is what he's known for. For Winslow, he threw a wrench into his playstyle. He was more of a free spirit. Although, as a rookie, he quickly made himself known as a defensive stud. This was also a strength of his coming in. He was a stifling defender, very quick on his feet laterally. But due to his frame, he could switch onto power forwards in a pinch. Pretty much every positive thing said about Winslow in his early years was because of his defense. He took on the task of defending the opposing team's best wing players every single time. Unlike most players, he actually uses his defense to fuel his offense, not the other way around, like how he described here. Honestly, I let my defense feed my offense. I just try to be that guy that can do it all defensively, and when we do that, we get stops. It lets my defense breathe life into my offense. The numbers back it up. Even as a 19-year-old, the Heat always held opponents to 6 or 7 points fewer when Winslow was on the floor. He received a ton of praise from everybody. Paul George compared him to a young Kawhi Leonard. His teammate, Dwayne Wade, said, I can't imagine what that would have been like for me, guarding Kobe and Iverson at 19. I wasn't ready. I just know when he's on the floor, we're a much better defensive team. A shoulder injury in his sophomore year was a huge setback, but generally, his offense was always a hit or miss. If he scored over 15 points in the game, then that was likely a good offensive game for him. Occasionally, you'd see flashes of his court vision and passing ability that he was praised for back in college. But just like his scoring, it was never consistent. 
However, despite his shortcomings, for the first few years in Miami, the organization made it clear in trade talks that Winslow was not available. In fact, for his first three years, he was the only guy who was untouchable. Among all the rumors of Goran Dragic, Josh Richardson, Dion Waiters, they would give all of them up if a good deal comes up. But for Winslow? The team had so much faith in him to succeed. It never happened. As the years went by, the expectations of Winslow slowly dwindled. The comparisons to Jimmy Butler or Kawhi Leonard became an afterthought. The Heat were hoping he would just become a mediocre offensive player at best. The dude was well below average from most areas of the floor. When it comes to finishing at the rim, that was a strong point prior to coming into the NBA. And even now, you'd assume it should still be a strong point. He's built like a tank, and supposedly has great body control. Yet his career 57% percentage at the basket is piss poor. That's lower than most point guards. His scoring efficiency overall is horrendous, a 41% career field goal percentage. But even worse, a 48% true shooting percentage. Roughly 8% below the league average for small forwards. Winslow's three-point shot was, funny enough, probably his best offensive option. In the 2018-19 season, which up until now was the best season of his career, Winslow averaged over 12 points a game, 5 rebounds and 4 assists, plus 37.5% from 3 on 4 attempts a game. The thing is, that percentage looks good by itself, but most of his 3s were hardly even contested. Defenders would leave him open quite often. Also, that season, 98% of his threes were assisted, cause he would just catch and shoot, so he can't even create space by himself. By 2020, the Heat accumulated a formidable rotation on the wings. That included Jimmy Butler, Kendrick Nunn, Duncan Robinson, and Tyler Hero. Guys who could actually, you know, put the ball into the basket. They had no need for Winslow anymore, and so, by the deadline, they traded him to the Memphis Grizzlies. He was super ecstatic to be going into a new situation, and even said the trade was, quote, one of the best things that happened in my life. Winslow also credited the Grizzlies for being patient with him. This was seen as somewhat of an attack on the Heat, because it implies that the Heat were not patient with him. Though, I don't know about that. I mean, they gave him five years to show what he can do. That's far more patient than most teams these days with their young guys. After those five years were over, they realized that this is basically the player he's always gonna be. This is who he is. Regardless, it was a fresh start for him, and he certainly needed this change of scenery. But then, his career made a drastic turn for the worse. Shortly after the trade to Memphis, Winslow suffered a severe hip injury during practice. He required hip replacement surgery, and it took 13 months for him to fully recover. This was another huge setback, and since then, his career has gone on a downward spiral. Of course, he's still in the league, but there's no hope for him becoming the star we once thought he could be. You could point to Winslow's failure in the NBA due to a multitude of reasons. He got drafted onto a team where he did shine defensively, but the offense did not match his playstyle. If he got drafted onto a younger team who played much faster, he would have fit in better. While the Heat did give him a ton of minutes, his role on the team was never defined. Early on, they pigeonholed him into a specific role, an energetic defensive player off the bench. Then, with Wade's departure and Bosch's retirement, he was asked to do too much. Like, literally run the offense like a point forward and be the initiator. He was essentially just thrown into that role. Now, those were strengths back in college, as he was far more athletic, faster, and stronger than most other guys at his position. In the NBA? Not so much. He couldn't just blow past anyone or outrun them on the break. The Heat also tried to turn him into a, a Draymond Green-esque player. A versatile defensive stopper who can create plays at the other end, but even so, Winslow just wasn't good enough, nor consistent enough to do that every night. Heck, even compared to Green, Winslow's offense has always been way worse. All those reasons, combined with his untimely injuries that stunted his progress, there's no returning from that. 
Anyway, that's all folks, let me know your thoughts on Justice Winslow. Currently, he's still quite young, but could you see him falling out of the NBA by his late 20s? He might not even be in the league a few years from now after his contract expires. Do you think he can still salvage his career and perhaps work his way into the starting lineup on some team in the future? Let me know in the comments, thank you all so much for watching, I hope y'all enjoyed the video, and of course, as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.